Vice Chair Birch, if you would go ahead and test your audio and visual for us, please. There you go. Thank you. Just go ahead and leave it on, Michael. I was gonna ask everybody else to turn their video on. So if you could please turn your video on. Okay, looks like we have a quorum. It's not quite 4.30. We'll just hang out here for a, a, another 30 seconds. And then we'll hey, Mark, congratulations. Thank you. Now you're going to have fun. <laughs> I've had fun here. Thanks for all the support. Okay, and with that, it is 4.30, so I'd like to call the regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Santa Rosa Design Review Board to order. Um, so I, I lost something on my iPad. I apologize. There it is. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to remind everybody why we're still here in a virtual setting. Uh, pursuant to government code section 54953E and the recommendation of the health officer of the County of Sonoma, design review board members will be participating in this meeting via Zoom webinar. Members of the public can participate virtually at www.zoom.us slash join or by toll-free telephone dialing 1-877-853-5257. And for both the web address and the tele uh, the toll-free telephone number, you can use the meeting ID 876-2004-5098. Public access to the meeting is provided through the Zoom platform. Uh, you can provide comments during the public comment periods. Additional information related to the meeting and participants is available at the city's website at srcity.org slash design review board. The meeting will be live streamed on the city's website at santa-rosa.legistar.com Santa slash calendar. You click on the in progress link to view. The meeting can also be viewed on Comcast channel 28 and is also available on the city's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash city of Santa Rosa. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the recording secretary for a roll call. Let the record reflect that all board members are present. Excellent. And it looks like we don't have any minutes to approve, do we? Or We do not. Thinking no? Okay, cool. So we'll just do approval of minutes at our next meeting, hopefully. Uh, so with that, we'll move on to uh, public comment. And this is uh, reserved for public comment on items not on the agenda for the evening. Uh, but uh, the public may comment just on uh, items that are within the purview and jurisdiction of the City of Santa Rosa Design Review Board. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the recording secretary uh, to see if we have any hands raised in the Zoom platform and recognize those folks uh, for their three minutes to speak. And also, um, if you'd like to raise your hand via Zoom, press the button to raise your hand. And if you're dialing in via telephone, dial star nine. Thank you, Chair Weigel. Um, it doesn't look like we have any hands raised at this time. Okay. So with that, I'd like to close public comment, not seeing any hands raised. And with that, we're going to go to item four, which is board business, uh, which is where we read the statement of purpose of the design review board. And that comes from Zoning Code Chapter 20-52.030F, Project Review. The review authority shall consider the location, design, site plan configuration, and the overall effect of the, of the proposed project upon surrounding properties and the city in general. Review shall be conducted by comparing the proposed project to the general plan, any applicable specific plan, applicable zoning code standards and requirements, consistency of the project within the city's design guidelines, architectural criteria for special areas, and other applicable city requirements, e.g. city policy statements and development plans. 
So with that, I'd like to move on to board member reports. And I think we, I mean, we do have uh, some pretty big board member news, pretty exciting, I think. But I'm going to let uh, board member staff say that himself, because uh, I think board member McHugh, I probably already spilled the beans. But uh, congratulations, Mark. Uh, and you can tell everybody uh, your, your good news. Oh, thanks. Thanks, um, thanks, John, for, for, raise, for raising the issue. Um, so, yes, I, I, I was fortunate enough, or it looks like I'll be fortunate enough to be on the uh, on the city council here starting in December. Um, I'm going to miss DRV. This has been a very helpful experience. Um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting me be part of the group. Uh, and I'm looking forward to finally meeting some of you besides John in person. Um, we've we've got to have some in-person meetings at some point. Um, but with respect to the DRB, my understanding is that I'm, I'm eligible for this meeting and the next one, and then I and then I'll need to step away. Um, but you'll 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 have to put up with me for it looks like at least uh, at least two more meetings. So thank 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 you for your patience, and again thank you for letting me be part of this group. Um, it has been very very helpful to me. Cool. Thanks, Mark. And once again, congratulations. Uh, I, I think you're, what, are you representing District 4 now? Two. Is that correct? No. Dis two. District 2. Sorry. John John Sawyer decided two. not to run. That's right, District 2. He's my representative. Well, <laughs> well excellent. Cool. All right. So with that, uh, any other board member reports this evening? All right. So... With that, we'll move on to item five, department reports, and I'll turn it over to our illustrious board liaison, Amy Nicholson. Thank you, Chair Weigel, and good evening, members of the board. Um, definitely congratulations to you, board member staff. Um, we've appreciated having you on the board, and it'll be great to continue working with you on the council. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to report, except that we are looking at moving to hybrid meetings. Finally, I know I've mentioned this a few times over the last year and a half, but um, we need to go hybrid by January 1st of next year. Um, so what that will mean is um, the board can present in the chamber or be present in the chamber. Members of the public are able to be in the chamber as well. Um, and I will be in the chamber. And there's options for remote participation um, given if there are certain um, circumstances, um, but it will be more or less um, what it was like uh, pre-COVID. So um, uh, as soon as I have additional information, I'll be sure to share that with you all, but just um, so you can sort of plan ahead. And we do expect to have uh, a meeting on the 1st of December and likely also on uh, December 15th as well. Um, I know we had a few canceled meetings in a row there. So um, I think that's all I have to report. Happy to answer any questions and thank you all for being here. Thanks, Amy. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we, we kind of jumped the gun, uh, maybe what was it, several months ago, we kind of like tried to have a hybrid meeting and then we we're like, whoa, 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 wait, maybe we're not going to do a hybrid meeting. <laughs> so it all worked out. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so great. Uh, so we will, I guess we'll move on to item six, statement of abstentions. So anybody have to abstain from the item 8.1 today? No. Oh, awesome. So with that, we'll move on to item seven, which we don't have anything. So then we'll go on to item 8.1, which is our scheduled item for this evening. And uh, that is Meadow Creek Townhomes Concept Design Review, 533 Bellevue Avenue, PRJ 22-011. And uh, with that, we'll turn it over to, uh, uh, I think, a, a, one of the city's newest city planners who happens to be a former City of Santa Rosa Design Review Board member, Sheila Wolfke. So uh, good to see you again, Sheila. And so we'll turn it over to you for a staff report. Great. Thank you, Chair Weigel. Let me see if I can get my screen sharing going. And good to see you all. And congratulations to board member Stop. That's great news. And could you let me know if you're able to see my screen? That would be helpful. 
Got it. Okay, awesome. All right, well, I already said good evening, so that business is taken care of. Um, so we'll head right into it. Uh, tonight, you'll be considering a concept design review package from the applicant for Meadow Creek Townhomes development proposal. This proposal is currently in the pre-application stage, which means the applicant is looking for the board's comments and recommendations on their concept site plan, landscaping and elevations to inform a future formal application to the city. To get you oriented, the property we're talking about is outlined in orange here and is located at 533 Bellevue Avenue in the city's southwest quadrant. It's across the street, which is Burgess Drive, from the Elsie Allen High School baseball fields, right here. Uh, to the north is the Southwest Estates subdivision. To the east is the Lantana Home subdivision. And also over here is the approved Colgan Creek Village project. To the south is Colgan Creek and Bellevue Avenue. And across the street, Bellevue Avenue, are these larger um, country properties that are located in the county of Sonoma's jurisdiction and outside the city's urban growth boundary. Here's a little closer view of the property outlined in blue. You can see a stand of trees here in the southwest corner. These are eucalyptus trees and otherwise the rest of the property is vacant. Uh, concept design review is really the applicant's opportunity to show you the different concept elements of their project and receive your feedback and recommendations. However, I'll go over some of the project details to provide you with some context before we see the applicant's presentation. The proposal includes construction of 63 two-story market rate attached townhomes. These townhomes would be arranged in five plex and six plex clusters throughout 12 separate buildings. They're all proposed at three bedroom units ranging in size from 1,500 to 1,800 square feet primary access would be off of Bellevue Avenue. They're proposing 190 parking spaces, and you can see how those would be configured below in the little bullets. There would be a common open space with barbecue, fireplace, and seating area, and private courtyards and patios. The multifamily use is permitted by right. I've highlighted where we are in the process tonight, which is concept design review by this board. And if a formal application is received, this project could receive reduced review authority consideration by the zoning administrator for design review, since it's located in a priority development area. However, there is discretion to keep this with the design review board. Small lot subdivision and tentative map consideration would be done by the city's planning commission. This slide provides you with a map showing the property outlined in orange. The general plan land use designation is medium density residential and the zoning is mostly R318 with a little rectangle of R16 up here. The property is 4.78 acres and could allow for development of up to 18 acres per uh, 18 units per acre or 86 units. This concept proposal is for 63 units with a density of 13.18 units per acre, which is mid-range. Since this is a pre-application concept design review request, under CEQA, this is not considered a project. Tonight, we're just looking for your comments and feedback on the concept. We held a neighborhood meeting last Wednesday evening. It was a small but very passionate group. I've highlighted the concerns that were brought up at that meeting with the top four being directly related to this project. And I'll just run through those for anyone, um, well, for you and for anyone in the public maybe who wasn't there. Uh, folks who attended found that the project as proposed would be adequately parked. There was concern about removal of the eucalyptus stand and nesting owls there and other wildlife concern about developing near Colgan Creek, that lights from Elsie Allen High School would impact homes on the site, uh, and concern about the uh, cumulative impact of development in this area and loss of nature. Evacuation concerns uh, with all the two-lane roads in the area, 
uh, the notion that more people would contribute more trash to Colgan Creek, a lack of services in this area, and the things that were mentioned were a library, grocery stores, and slow bus service. That this area is considered by the folks who attended as a high crime area with excessive litter. Um, someone mentioned that traffic studies are being done at inappropriate times, not reflecting accurate conditions. Um, from the city's end, we're encouraging residents who have, and I mentioned this in the neighborhood meeting, who have concerns about development and where services are located to become active in the city's general plan update, which guides land use decisions. And that's currently underway right now. But I think you can see in general, there was a sense of um, dissatisfaction with the amount of development that's taking place in this area. So again, the purpose of tonight's concept design review is for the board to provide comments and direction to the applicant on their conceptual plans so they're able to put forth a formal application that can be supported. This concludes my report and I know the applicant team is here with a presentation or somewhere. Uh, I would like you to note that I've added a couple landscape slides to the applicant's presentation that were not included in the packet materials these two slides are at the end of their presentation and will better describe the proposed tree plantings as well as the conceptual furnishings and amenities for the proposed outdoor common space. So that is it from me. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and I'd like to check in um, whenever it's appropriate. I've forgotten how this works already, but uh, I know one of the applicants was trying to tune in from out of country and maybe having some issues. So that's what's going on on this end or their end. Thanks, Sheila. Um, so typically, yeah, I know it's been, uh, I don't know, six months, nine months since you've been on the board, uh, something like that. Uh, so what we what we have been doing is we've been doing a staff presentation and then the applicant presentation if they have one and kind of saving up our thoughts and comments and then we're, we're going to public comment uh, and then we're bringing it back to the board for questions of staff and, applic and applicant and then we're going to comments that seems to have been working pretty good for us um, in terms of you know trying to collect uh, you know any public thoughts and kind of meshing them and melding them with our own um, so that being said, uh, we'll turn it over to the applicant now for the applicant, applicant presentation. Um, and it looks like um, we have all the applicants there listed as attendees. Um, and so, uh, Sheila, if you want to bring up their <coughs> presentation and screen share, that'd be uh, great. And we get rocking and roll with them. So we'll turn it over to them. Um, hi, uh, can everybody hear me? We can indeed. Oh, okay. Um, if you also are able to unmute Jay, I believe he was able to dial in by phone. Um, are you able to unmute him too? Um, it looks yes, like can you hear me? as a panelist now. So yeah, yeah, he's uh, there we go. Yep, we can hear you, Jay. Thanks. Okay, okay, I'll let Savannah, excuse me, Savannah, I'll let Savannah do the. So it sounds like maybe he's still having some problems. Yep. Looks like he's logged out again. <laughs> anyway, so um, Savannah, if you could go ahead and. Uh, Sheila yeah. will go through the slides and um, uh, we'll, as long we'll go as, from there. Uh, you guys can hear me. I'll just go ahead and get started going through the slides here. Um, we also have our um, four uh, consultants uh, present um, who will also be able to answer any questions after the presentation. Um, so to get started, um, we are uh, in the process of uh, presenting the Meadow Creek townhomes. Um, so the front slide is uh, just a backdrop of the site. Um, and it's right next to our current uh, residential uh, subdivision Meadow Creek, which is why we already have the logo Meadow Creek. 
um, that's currently um, almost finished. And then we're also building the second phase of uh, Meadow Creek, which is um, kind of on the other side of the street. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, so first, I wanted to tell all of you a little bit about our Ryder Homes, in case you don't already know. Um, we have been around for 60 years, since 1959. Um, we have won multiple awards for design, including Best New Home Product. Um, we were the 2019 and 2021 Builder of the Year in Northern Nevada. Um, we design the home so that um, each new project is specific for the community that it's intended for, and we don't replicate uh, floor plans. Um, so we've built over 7,000 homes in California and Nevada with over 500 in the uh, city of Santa Rosa, uh, most of them actually in this neighborhood that uh, the Meadow Creek townhomes will be in. So you can go to the next slide. Um, so we are also family owned and operated. We're not just a big uh, public builder. Um, and so we have three generations um, now uh, with Jay um, and Ned and myself. Um, so these are just some of the things that homeowners have said about the homes that they've purchased from us. Um, people tend to really think that the quality is superior compared to other uh, homes that are available on the market um, in our sector. Um, and they think that our standard um, finishes and appliances are better than a lot of the other places. Uh, so this is the neighborhood context map. Um, Sheila also showed you the location. Uh, we have uh, in the Meadow Creek subdivision to the north, uh, L.C. Allen High School to the west, Colvin Creek to the south, uh, residential property to the east. Uh, site circulation will be the north-south orientation with buildings in an east-west orientation. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, these are some photos of the site that we have included from different angles. Um, and in the photos, you can see the orange fence. That's the uh, salamander uh, protection uh, fence. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so this slide um, is uh, the first slide about the um, elevations. So it's going to be farmhouse. Um, we're proposing, like Sheila mentioned, 63 townhome units, 15, 1800 square feet. Um, the density, we are aiming for the mid um, of the uh, zoning, which um, would be 13.18 units an acre, which is kind of right in that middle um, range. And then the proposed project is going to target buyers in the economically priced segmentation of the Santa Rosa housing market. Um, so that will be the lower end of market rates. You can go to the next slide. Okay, um, these are the floor plans. Um, so we have uh, five plex buildings and uh, six plex buildings. Um, so this one here is one of the five plex buildings. Um, each of the buildings is two stories. I can go to the next slide. Um, so this is the second floor of the five plex. And the next slide. Um, this is a uh, and elevation, uh, front and rear, we're gonna have two car garages. Um, there's going to be uh, little um, patios in the front. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, and the next one. Um, so this uh, is the pre preliminary site plan. Um, like I mentioned, we have both five and six unit buildings. They're two story, alley loaded, a total of 12 buildings um, with private courtyards and patios for each unit. Um, the front entries um, are mostly along green space elements with an eyes on the street approach to the neighborhood. 
Um, here we see the landscape plan. Um, and if you go to the next slide, this is the colored rendering. Um, so in this beautiful colored rendering, you can see that a large central park uh, presents itself as the primary focal point when entering the neighborhood and provides pedestrian connection through the site with a paseo element running from the Colden Creek access um, through the site to a passive garden between buildings seven and eight. Um, can you go to the next one? Uh, so this is uh, one of the added slides. Uh, let me zoom out a little. Um, and this shows some of the uh, tree um, elements and uh, the proposed tree palette. Um, and you can just go to the next slide. Um, and here we have um, just some conceptual um, ideas um, such as this overhead shade structure, uh, fireplace with outdoor seating and a picnic table um, which you can see these uh, elements um, in um, the big green space area that we're proposing. Um, and then now just if you have any questions, um, either uh, Jay, if he's back on here, um, or myself or any of our um, uh, consultants uh, can answer the questions. Um, are we able to unmute them as well? So Savannah, uh, like I was saying earlier, <clears throat> typically what we do is uh, uh, after your presentation, we go to uh, any public comment that um, that might be uh, had from members of the public on your project, and then we'll bring it back to the board and we'll, we'll ask questions then. And uh, typically the recording secretary um, you know, can un unmute and mute <laughs> whoever is attending the meeting as uh, as they see fit. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Um, okay, sounds good. Like, Thank uh, you. Yeah, looks looks like your consultants are, are are all in the meeting and they're flagged appropriately um, by city staff. So that's great. And uh, so with that, I'd like to go to public comment from members of the public. Uh, so this is a, a this isn't a public hearing, but we still like to to hear um, from members on the public on concept items. And so it looks like there might be some folks from the public here right now who may want to speak. So if you could please raise your hand uh, and the recording secretary will recognize you. If you're a member of the public wishing to make a comment, you can do so by selecting the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're calling in, please press star nine and that will enable the raised hand feature. Chair Weigel, there are no hands raised. All right, cool. Um, so no hands raised. So with that, we'll close our public comment period and we'll bring it back to the board. And uh, we're just gonna play hot potato today. And I think I'm gonna put um, board member staff in the hot seat because uh, he doesn't get many more options to get put in the hot seat here. So uh, Mark, do you have any questions of staff or the applicant? Um, one question that Sheila may have answered, but I missed it. Um, what is the what's the minimum required amount of parking uh, for development like this in this area? Yeah, you know, board member staff, we we have not even done a formal look at this application, but we know enough to know that they're adequately parked. Um, so I don't have a firm number for you but this is adequately parked for what they're proposing. I was actually thinking about it from the other direction um, about just the amount, they, there seems to be a sizable amount of parking and we can take that up in comment period, but I, I just I wanted to know whether there, there was a minimum that they had to meet with this number. And, and it sounds like they've, they've, it, they've likely surpassed it. Yeah, once we get a formal application, we'll do that review. Um, right now we can, we can kind of sense that it is adequately parked, but we haven't done any analysis yet. Thank you, that was my question. All right, uh, any other questions, Mark? Are you good? 
Excellent. All right. Uh, we'll go to board member Sharon. Questions of staff or the applicant? Uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you, Chair Weigel. Um, and thank you, Planner Wolski. Uh, great to see you. Great to see uh, some of your projects starting to come through the pipeline, too. Um, happy for you and happy for the city as well. Um, and uh, congrats, Mark. Um, look forward to uh, to hounding you to uh, keep the city beautiful and well designed over the next four years. So don't forget where you came from. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I also want to apologize first. I'm pretty sick. So if I cough or have to sneeze or whatever, I apologize. So um, all parents out there probably will commiserate and understand. Um, <clears throat> uh, I want to um, one uh, second uh, um, board member Stapp's question about parking. Um, certainly seems adequately parked. Um, certainly seems overparked, um, and would like to get a, a firm number on what is the minimum, as he um, requested, the minimum number required, because um, it seems like we're um, somewhere over. I can't remember the exact uh, number, but over two per unit. Um, um, so. Just want to know about that and um, and how that also relates to the um, I saw that street parking was included in the parking count as well. Um, just want to know some more information about about that and encourage the applicants um, for uh, when we get to um, uh, past conceptual design to look at ways to um, make parking as efficient and minimized as possible um, and encourage um, alternative forms of transportation, um, bike parking, uh, you know, um, access to the buses and, and transit lines. So what's well, going to be a big thing, uh, you've already had two questions about that so far. So I think that's one thing we're going to focus on. Um, <clears throat> uh, and question for staff. Uh, we are conceptual. Just wanted um, to see uh, we have this has not been seen by fire or traffic or anything yet have they even made a, a, an initial pass at this has fire made an initial pass at the application at all they haven't no okay great um that's that's cool i i thought so but i wanted to make sure make sure because i um uh have some thoughts on the um layout access and circulation as well um i wanted to see if some of this was driven by um other concerns which it, it is later on in the process, but for now, it's not. Um, and that, uh, I think, should do it. Um, I, I did have one, actually, question. Um, uh, is a, uh, nope, that should do it, actually. Nope. I will cut myself off. Thanks, everybody. Oh, um, I, I do uh, have a comment uh, based on what you just said, uh, board member. Um, uh, Sharon, yeah. Yeah, Sharon. Yes, Savannah. Um, Thank you. Hi. Um, so according to Jay, uh, Fire did look at the previous site plans. Okay. Yeah, I imagine they looked at it, but maybe they haven't given, you know, official conditions of approval or anything yet. So, um, but that's good that they they took a look at it um, already. So thank and thank you for the answer. Mm -hmm. All set, Chair. All right, thanks, Adam. Um, board member McHugh, questions of no, staff no question. and or the applicant? No, no, no questions. Question. All right. Thanks, John. And yeah. uh, Vice Chair Birch, questions of staff and applicant? Yeah, probably a question for staff. <clears throat> what is the, uh, can you, what can you tell us? And I'm, I'm, I'm probably um, sicker than board member Sharon, so I, I hate to be a one upper, but um, there you go. So <laughs> I'm very croaky. <laughs> so, <laughs> Apologies to everyone. Um, what is the uh, the Meadow Creek Southwest Estates to the north? Um, those are, it appeared that as though they're going to be six single family lots in that R one six zoning. Is that right, Sheila? Yeah, let me check that out. And I saw you know I didn't get out to see the property see the project and I, I but a slide that i saw um it, just of the site it appeared as though that was un that was yeah. not not developed at this point hey uh, I, michael i actually yeah. i have an answer um let me find it um rider homes 
actually has a, 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 a site plan on uh, their website that I was looking at earlier. So let me pull that up and uh, I'll, I'll hold it up or something. Okay. We'll figure it out. We can, we can assume and maybe, so then this becomes a question, that's great. And maybe it is a question for the applicant since they would be very familiar with the project. Um, that, that would be a, a backyard fence at that at, along the uh, north edge of the project then from the adjacent development. Yeah, we're just getting, uh, Jay will send me a, a text here on what he wants to say, um, but I think most likely. Can you hear me? So, yeah, so there you go, Michael. Yep. I think we're talking about uh, right, right this side. Got it. Okay, backyard fence and landscape, it appears. Yeah, yeah that and, it's, uh, and it's six homes. One, two, three, yep. six homes. Great. Off of that Flapjack Way. <laughs> Flapjack. Um, that, was, that was my only question for now. Is Flapjack not to be confused with Blackjack, Caddyshack, or Applejack? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, and then I guess the only question I had uh, <clears throat> for the applicant was, um, they, and they may know this off the top of their head, uh, what's the plate height of uh, your the, the, the single family housing to the, to the north? Um, I'm taking a educated guess on the elevations that it, the plate height looks like it's like nine foot, but I wanted to confirm that because I know the plate height for your duplex development. Yeah, so um, that that was uh, correct about the um, trees with the fence. Um, Jay just confirmed that um, over text message, and he says that it's a nine foot plate, nine over nine. All right, there we go. See. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, I, yeah, I was looking at the uh, elevations on your website, and I was kind of like, yep, if it's an eight-foot door, the plate height, yeah. So wanted to make sure I had that right for the, for the adjacent development, if you will. <coughs> Excuse me. I am not sick. I just had a cough. Um, <laughs> it seems like everybody else is sick tonight. Uh, so with that, um, after everybody's got their questions answered, uh, we'll bring it back to the board now for comments on the project and uh oh well, so um, with I, that, uh, I had a comment sure, go ahead um so uh scott uh adams um from the city and lagoni architecture um just had an answer on um what we were talking about earlier uh about the parking um we're at approximately 3.0 to 1 on site and required for city ordinance is 2.0 resident plus 0 0.5 guests equals 2.5 to one minimum. Uh, so yes, we're over and some uncovered stalls could be removed. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Adam and uh, Mark, does that answer your question that you guys had on the parking? Is that can help you out with your comments? Yep. Excellent. Cool. All right. So with that, then we'll bring it back to the board here and we're uh, going to go through comments. Um, so with that, I think uh, Mark is in the hot seat again tonight. And so we'll go to Mark for his comments on the project. All right. And I'm going to try to take note. And yeah, and I'm going to try to take notes like I always do uh, just so, you know, at the end, so we can try to summarize for the applicant um, what's going on. Perfect. Um, well, back to back to the parking for a second. I think everyone can see where, where we're going with this. Um, if we could free up some of that parking space um, for some other use on that site, whether it's to expand the uh, the, the park area um, or add add other green space elsewhere, um, something, it, it would be great to it would be great to to not have some of that you know not have as much space simply asphalted over for parking. Um, I'll also I'll also uh, note the um, the letter the late correspondence that we received from I think it was Alan Montes. Uh, I thought his comments were were um, were relevant, and that the um, the sides of the buildings were were uh, were not were not were, could use a bit more design. I think was the the summary of his point, um, especially since they were facing into other residential neighborhoods or street side. 
Um, so I think are those the east west, east west elevations? Um, but to spend more time on on those sides of the buildings to make sure that they're that they're um, attractive, whether viewed from the streets or from the residences. Uh, Adam, you were hinting at this with the with the traffic and the fire. I'm curious to see the traffic studies and the and the um, the ingress egress issues along that site as well. I mean, Bellevue is a fairly narrow road, um, and so paying paying attention to, to ingress ingress egress there and the traffic issues is going to be is going to be important. <laughs> And I think that's I think that's it for me actually. Again, with em with emphasis on freeing up some of that parking space for for other other more productive use if we can. That's it for my comments. Um, oh, I, I, actually, let me let me let me. Um, also, I should I should have let off with this. Um, it's great to see this kind of development out in that area. I mean, I love, I love the, I love the townhouse format. I love the idea of having more residential right there. We do need other services out there. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do a lot of infrastructure work in that area. But having a, a development like this, like this in that, in that area is great. So I commend the developer, um, and I look forward to um, uh, seeing the next iteration of this, of this project. And now, now I'm finished. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, just to touch on that, I think, uh, you know, I was kind of hoping that we'd have public comment. And the reason I was hoping we have public comment is because we actually just saw a project not too, too long ago that is directly adjacent to this project to the east along Colgan Creek. And it's a, also a small lot subdevelopment, small lot subdivision development. But that one uh, actually had an ADU component incorporated into it in addition to single family homes. So each single family home had an ADU as part of it, but it wasn't a separate ADU, it was an integrated ADU. So, and they were kind of duplexy, um, if I remember correctly. And uh, I'm, not, I'm blanking on the developer right now. But it's a, if you look at a Google map, it's the, the, the green area right adjacent to this parcel. And there's a, an existing development to the north that's very similar to, I think, what got approved to the south in terms of the size of the, the development. And so that, me, I think what Sheila alluded to in terms of, um, the, uh, uh, the the public comments that she had at the neighborhood meeting in terms of the amount of development in the area, right? There's a lot of projects <clears throat> that have either been approved by us or are coming through the pipeline, it seems like, in this area. Um, so I, I, I hope that gives some context uh, uh, to what's going on. I, I know that that was something, that's something I always look at uh, when I'm, you know, looking at a project is what, what have we approved recently is there something coming up in this area too? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So, but anyway, I thought that would give some context uh, to some of you, I think Mark's uh, already great comments. So with that, we'll go to board member Sharon. Oh. Thank you, Drew, because I was going about to chime in on that as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, um, the, ad the adjacent property that was presented to us uh we one of the things we did talk about with that layout was um access to lcl lc allen high school and this potential lot and potential access to cutting through or working together because it was brought up that this was going to be potentially developed um in that meeting um so one glad to see this uh moving forward and you bringing this um this proposal but also uh would like to encourage um uh you know like being good neighbors and access and you know not having the, the need necessarily for kids to even go down to bellevue to get over to the high school but um potentially there's a way to actually work with these developments all working together creating a set of or excuse me uh creating one neighborhood rather than a set of neighborhoods that are self-contained um it's one of the things about subdivisions that is um eh, Un, unideal is is how um, uh, uh, separate they can they can be. So there's one thing to think about with with this um, proposal is is ways that you can work with surrounding landowners and also creating permeable barriers. Permeable um, uh, barriers is a, is a is a loaded <clears throat> word, but um, permeable edges um, to to mesh this with the surrounding uses developments and um, yeah. Um, you're in early days, but, um, you know, this is stuff that we'd love to see with this because there is a lot of, uh, development going on down in this section of town, a big, um, article on the paper today about the potential city, um, park that's 
been going in. So encourage you um, as the applicant team to, um, if if you haven't really um, get a pulse of what's going on in this part of town. Um, great that you did the public meeting um, uh, very recently. Really glad to see that. <clears throat> um, uh, for my comments, um, yes, the, let's see here. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the, let's see, I, I can start with the, um, let's start with the actual architecture itself. Um, I think that uh, yeah, the, the proposal that you had um, for us today is, is very simple and clean and, and straightforward. Um, I, I do like where you're, you're headed with the overall aesthetic. Um, I think that it's going to fit with, um, you know, this part of town with the, the sort of rural edge neighbor or uh, rural edge character down here as of now, um, you know, looking 30 years from now, who knows if it'll be similar. Um, but, uh, but these, this I think is going to be, you know, a potentially classic, um, uh, and timeless, uh, uh, design as you, as you have it here. Um, uh, there, there's precedents, um, definitely around the city for things like this. I can, I'm, they, this reminded me in sp specifically of the Sonoma Ranch development up in Larkfield. Um, you know, that, you know, that kind of genre of, of, um, of architecture. So I like that. I like where you're going with this. Um, keeping it clean and simple, you know, contemporary, but not uh, modern. Um, this is, um, not everything has to be flat roofs and, you know, lime green punch outs or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, that being said, I do, I do think that, um, it's, it's, a you know, we are conceptual here and, you know, in that case, I think that you're thinking primarily about how you can use the site, the type of units you're getting here, um, the, you know, general fabric of what you're, you're trying to propose so you can really, uh, get down to specifics as you move forward. Um, as you're moving forward, I would, um, I'd encourage uh, to think, to take this classic style that you have and attempt to, to, you know, customize it to, to your own, um, uses to, uh, to, you know, kind of spice it up a little bit, um, really make it human. Um, the, you know, it's, it's, uh, some of the facades are a little flat and I mean, the color, color options are, are pretty muted, um, gray. Um, uh, and so again, not everything has to have lime green in it, but, um, you know, some, something, um, a little bit warmer, um, um, could could add, um, and also I think that you've got a nice rhythm starting with the ranch style. Um, you know, those those flatter uh, flatter uh, faces that you have. You know, thinking of the the garages. Um, and you know, as the the late correspondence brought up of you know anything that's outward as well. Really, um, looking at our our design guidelines, the four sided architecture, all edges of the building. All um, really, uh, you know, we would like to see, you, you know, the, those, those customized detailing is, is where we would like to turn to design. Uh, and, uh, that's why we're here today is, um, exactly. um, I think again, that being said, you know, I think that you're, um, yeah, you, you got a good start. Um, but it, it, I'll be excited to see where you, you go this um uh, a little um and i really have to balance the concerns with with cost and affordability as well um thank you for keeping that in mind as well um you're trying to hit it at this point um that is lacking so uh thanks for doing that <clears throat> um now moving into the uh site and um and and parking um, uh, circulation as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say that this is overparked. Um, you know, uh, keep, keep an eye on that. You know, it's, it, uh, we want to have adequate parking, but we also want to, um, you know, we don't need to, to bend, bend over backwards just to, for all the cars. We're creating human developments, not car centered developments. Um, especially you're across the street from a school um, and there are schools around in the neighborhood, you're creating family developments as well. Um, a lot of these three bedrooms, um, you know, hopefully families are gonna be in there and um, you'll have kids running around. Um, 
that moves towards <clears throat> making the site as um, as human focused as possible and human scale. Um, and yeah, my question about the about fire and circulation. Um, uh, you know, um, you have the central entrance uh, with we you have you're calling A Street right now, um, and um, wondering, you know. You know, one the, the rationale behind that, um, and uh, two, if you can think about taking that out and create that paseo as as being a full paseo, go all the way to the uh, all the way to um, Burgess, go from one side of the um, development to the other. Uh, in in that way, you're you're creating a potential connection, um, pedestrian connection across the street to the high school. Um, you're creating more access. You're creating more open area. Um, you, uh, in your description, have mentioned having a large central park. Um, one, I'd, I'd quibble with it being large. Two, being central. Um, it's sort of in the middle, but it's not necessarily smack dab in the middle. You want to um, have that that large central portion create this this um, you know two parks on the other side of this central um, main street. You know, think about this development as a you know city as a neighborhood in microcosm um and so here you're creating a main street all have your eyes be looking towards this central um both uh driveway main street in the middle there if this is the the layout you want to do main street right there eyes on the street but then also eyes going um east west with that paseo that's there potentially take out a street um have that be you know have the center be Really, the center of the of the um, the parcel, and cre create the 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 focus, the, the the actual warmth, the heart of, of this little neighborhood, as that paseo there. Um, you know, that that could be. You know, think of, of you know again creatively. You're creating crosswalks going across. You're maybe taking that whole intersection there. Um, that now is an intersection, removing A Street, but then you're creating something in the middle there. Maybe that, that central square, think of it as the commons of this neighborhood, that that is painted. It's a different texture. It's a different surface material. Um, uh, potentially there's a piece of artwork or there's four pieces of artwork all around. Um, something like that. Uh, really, um, uh, you know, you've, you, you're, you've got your first proposal of providing housing. Now, provide the amenities, provide the neighborhood, provide the actual flesh to what you have. Um, you know, neighborhoods are, are wonderful, but, um, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, suburban subdivisions are just housing and you drive in and drive out, um, or at least over the past 50 years, that's how it's been. You drive in, drive out, and then, you know, that's it. Create something that's more um, pedestrian focused, that's more of a home place rather than just Everyone's sequestered in their their own town home, and then they go to work, they go to school. Um, create create a destination here, um, in a in a self-contained home unit. Um, with that, I think you can, um, uh, you know, reconsider your circulation. Um, this is all, of course, in with uh, with within the eye of whatever um, um, fire has to say about circulation and, and access, of course, too. Um, uh, they're gonna have some, you know, pretty strict guidelines on that um and uh um <clears throat> again referencing uh, the t the exterior of the, the site the surrounding uses um reference those surrounding uh developments as well um does this need to be you know fenced and closed off can there be permeable edges can you can you um you know have uh, pedestrian access um, between all these other um developments um uh, also, thinking in terms of the natural um, surrounding context, you've got Colgan Creek right there. It's 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 edge here, and as it is, you've got the townhomes um, to the southern portion of the of the lot, just um, backing up almost to the to the property line setback. And um, you know, I don't necessarily see anything that says like, "Hey, we've got this beautiful uh, creek that's there," because Colgan Creek, there's been a ton of restoration work um, by the city over the past. Uh, I don't know, 10 years. Um, city staff can correct me on that if it's not enough time, but I know that um, they've been doing a ton of work on Colgan Creek and it's continuing. And there's been a ton of work um, just on the edge of the um, LCL and high school campus as well, um, that the school has been very much uh, involved with. 
Um, I know that's outside of your parcel. I believe it's outside of your parcel. Um, but uh, at least referencing and, and nodding toward that. And that can be, again, you know, creating the eyes towards that um, or um, the your use of plant material or your use of trying to bring that creek in, um, that, that creek habitat. Uh, your, you know, stormwater, that can be in the stormwater uh, treatment plant palette, can be the trees that you choose. It's, you know, there's lots of things to think about. Um, and there's a potential to think of other partnerships there. One, that's a great thing. It, it adds to that human scale, um, but it also provides a really nice educational opportunity for this this portion of town. And it knits you into the community more. Um, really, one of the things that's, I, I think is difficult with, with a lot of de developments in this part of town is that um, they feel like they're being plopped into this part of town that hasn't had development. And um, uh, I think one of the things that is that has been important and will be very important, um, both just for how this section of town is is built out, um, but then also for the current residents feeling like they have buy-in and are being listened to, is to see how your development can be a part of this overall neighborhood. And that's everything from right close by to bigger, um, go, thinking, referencing um, Roseland in general. Um, so, um, you know, Roseland is not necessarily a, a gray and, and flat place. It's uh, it's pretty vibrant. Um, it's lots of culture and food and beauty and natural resources. And uh, you have a great opportunity here. I think you have a really good start. And um, I'm going to be excited to see where you go. I'd say push push your ideas. Um, really think creatively. Keep the budget budget in mind, but, you know, uh, let's buy stuff a little bit. Uh, thanks for what you're 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 bringing, and um, yeah, I look forward to seeing your next iteration. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adam. Um, so with that, we'll go to Board Member McHugh's comments. One of the things that. Uh, uh, I want to say is I'm very supportive of the project. Uh, reading through reading through the materials, I also was was interested in the um, Alan Montes uh, comments regarding the uh, um, you know farmhouse and and some of the other uh, aspects of you know desert modern. I, you know I'm not an architect, and so uh, I don't know how that how that all works, but. What I what I was thinking about was as I was looking at at your presentation that the buildings seem kind of how would I say this I would like a little bit more spice they're a little dull um, I would like a little bit more um, um, attention to uh, you know looking at how you know I I liked his comments in terms of too much stucco and 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 not enough. Uh, um, Not enough character, I guess, is is, is what I'm saying. And so uh, I also, you know, support uh, uh, the idea of making this a, uh, you know, creating a sense of community. And I, and I uh, endorse the comments of Alan's comments with regard to, you know, how this relates to what's around it. Now, I know you did kind of walk around in the neighborhood and kind of look at what, uh, uh, what's out there and some of the work that you're doing uh, with the um, uh, single uh, the the homes you're building uh, the single single homes that you're building uh, uh, north of the of the project and uh, uh, you know I'd like you to to just be maybe a little bit more creative uh, I uh, um, That's, I mean, I guess that that's that's probably it. I mean, I, I'm uh, uh, like I say, I'm supportive of the project. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm sure there are architectural things that one can do to improve. But as I say, I'm not an architect, so I rely on my architectural colleagues to help me out with that. So that concludes my comments. Thanks, John. Appreciate you, uh, Vice Chair Birch. Your comments. You bet. So, a couple of a um, couple of couple of different tracks here. Um, first track, I'll stick with the architecture, um, and I'm going to agree with I'm going to agree with uh, Board Member Sharon that 
I think this is a this is a really nice starting point in terms of looking at maybe a single front elevation and the attention to detail, the rear elevation. Rear elevation. Um, the, the broad comment I would have around spicing things up is that um, I think you know it's difficult because we, we're getting these concept design presentations and we don't even necessarily have a material uh, call out, right? So we're assuming when we look at these drawings, uh, stucco, we're assuming hardy plank, you know, with the bat, board and bat appearance. We're assuming, you know, we're making some assumptions about the quality and the level of detail of some of these things. Uh, are the canopies that we see over the front doors, are they a metal construction, you know, with a, with a pan deck roof and it's painted and it's a very high level of detail? Or is this going to turn out to be kind of a dash together, um, you know, rough sawn for, and I'm not, certainly not assume, not pointing the finger at, at the writer team and saying this is what you guys do, but bottom line, we have a very limited level of detail. So Adam, I did appreciate your comment that this is a good, as a start, and it's just looking at it without a lot of detail. This is a great start in my eyes as well. Uh, looking at, uh, is it Sonoma States, I think, 38 North, you know, quality of materials, different projects around that we've approved and that we've either had a little bit more uh, information or more, um, I guess, authority to, to sort of help make those decisions. I'm going to assume we're at that level of detail. I think the design is nice as a starting point. For, for spicing things up, I think that you probably wouldn't need more than some, <clears throat> than some modest color variation between buildings. You know, that's a starting point. Um, and, and I'm just on the front and back elevations right now. I'm going to get to the side elevations. Um, but I think some variations in color, maybe there's a little bit, uh, maybe, maybe another little material block gets introduced. But the bottom line is I find it balanced and calm and just bringing some basic um, variation from building to building across the project may really serve you. Is it more, is it, is it more than two color palettes? Uh, maybe not. But I do think that that would be a good starting point. My, my issue with the side elevations is that uh, they are vast stretches of stucco and they address Burgess, uh, which is essentially the drive in. And then, you know, to a lesser extent, but let's be fair, facing the Lantana subdivision uh, to, to the east. So I do think that some articulation needs to be brought to those elevations. Um, I know you're working with the floor plan and the window placement for garages and bedrooms and all sorts of things, but we really don't have any sort of um, color or material blocking going on on those elevations at all that would give the, the, the appearance of what is required by our design guidelines, whether it's us talking or the zoning administrator talking, then that is four-sided architecture. And, and this is really not four-sided right now. We need to bring that four-sided um, element to, to these elevations. So I, I really would encourage you to take a look at how to bring um, a little bit of character. Don't have to dress them up like they're the front of the building. I think is, you know, in, in elevation world, we look straight at this big plot of stucco. I know in reality that we're driving down the street and we're seeing the back and the front of a building and there's a lot more going on, but this is a large expanse of, of stucco at this point. So doing some work on those side elevations would be uh, really helpful to this, I think really becoming a nice four-sided architecture based on the pattern of what you've already got going on. The, I'm, I'm gonna call it the fronts and the backs, the front doors and the garage doors. That, those are my comments on the architecture. As far as the site plan goes, I'm going to do a little um, north-south uh, comparison here. I think on the south side, facing Bellevue and the creek, I think it's very appropriate to have the front side of the building, the, the, the ceremonial front door, although we all know the garage door is the front door, right? But the ceremonial front door is there on the south side at the creek facing Bellevue, and that's a that's a that's a really that's an attractive presence uh, to the greatest number of travelers that are you know drivers that are going to see the project. Um, I'm going to come back to the to the north side in a minute when I tell you, or to the south side in a minute when I tell you what I have a concern with about the north side. Um, 
from a site from at this end of the project, I'm not 100% sure that addressing six backyards with the front of the um, building of the two buildings that are there on the north. I don't know that we're not throwing away our better opportunity for the overall, um, you know, uh, the overall quality of the project to not get some of the front door onto what is the garage side, so the south side of those two buildings. And so I can spend 12 of the parking spaces that we've been talking about and see if we couldn't split that back facade into a garage door and a, and a porch and a front door that comes in in a different arrangement. I believe if I'm looking at the 10 foot setback on one of the drawings, that we'd be able to, to drop the building back to that 10 foot setback line. I hope I'm right, I'm, I'm pulling this out of air. We could drop the building, uh, pull the buildings to the north 10 feet, pick up front yards, pick up a front door, so we'd have a combination of a front door and a garage door. Um, changes up the floor plans. You guys like different floor, floor plans according to company history. Um, but I do think from a site plan perspective and an overall project quality perspective, it would be nice to see front doors on the front side. Uh, um, and then be careful about windows on the north side there because we're gonna be looking into the backyards and the homes of six lots would be my thought. So, you know, love to leave the architecture on the on the north side of those buildings uh, somewhat intact, but I would love to see the front door on the other side. Um, bringing that back to the south side and the two buildings uh, at the south end of the property facing Bellevue, as much, I, I do love and I would love to keep the appearance of the ceremonial front side of the, of the homes facing Bellevue. I would love to lose a parking space there and split those back garage doors as well and have the entry, you know, potentially be off of, uh, have something that feels like an entry. Can't do as much with a setback there, so that's not something that I would live and die for. Um, we don't want just a front door onto necessarily an asphalt piece that's a little bit more problematic. So those are just some creative solutions to potentially playing around with the site plan a little bit to I think get a little bit more um, interest in, into the project itself. And um, those are my comments. Thanks, Vice Chair Birch. Um, so it's, it's interesting how you keyed off on a couple of things because I think I, I kind of keyed off on them as well. Um, and also Adam <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, in many ways. Uh, I have a couple of somewhat different thoughts kind of around the same, um, uh, I'm gonna riff on the same tune, I guess, but maybe play a slightly different jazz melody or something. I don't know what to call it. Um, but uh, I think the first thing that, that, that I noticed that it's probably a, a new item that I don't think anybody else has discussed, but I think Adam kind of talked about it just in a different way is um, I actually think uh, uh, B Street, uh, where it's currently located, is is like the wrong location for it. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> um, I think you need to move B Street to the west. And by doing that, it will enlarge the park on the east side of B Street. And so what you would do is you would take, um, I think building, building three, four, five, and six, and you would turn them into triplexes instead of fiveplexes and you would take building 12, 11, 10, and nine and turn those into seven plexes. So effectively we have less like front entry drive, right? And so you have less front entry drive, but then you get more park. And so you get more public space for the people that live in this development. Um, so you're not losing any units. You're not, <laughs> you know, so same amount of parking, same amount of units, same, but I think this is it's a creative way to to shift something um, and, and which, but then you get something for it, right? Um, we're, we're losing paving, which is fantastic for stormwater runoff, right? We're losing, you know, dry aisle, but we're gaining, you know, um, public park, which is, I, I, I think you should really pursue that option or some variation of that option. I mean, I, I understand why you did what you did in terms of creating an axial relationship to uh, the site, right? And you've got a rectangular site, so you created axes put an axi east-west, you put an axi north-south, and you went from there, right? I mean, I, I get that, but I think this being a little asymmetrical may solve um, a little bit of this, I think, uh, what I've heard from numerous other board members about some more amenities, right, on the site um, and losing some street. 
So that's one idea I have. Uh, related to the north-south building orientation, I, I, I agree with Michael in many ways. Um, I'm not uh, in love with the, so uh, the south. I actually have a little bit of a different uh, hot take, if you will, on the south. Uh, while I don't disagree with Michael about the, the ceremonial front entrances facing Colgan Creek, there is a substantial uh, setback between Bellevue Avenue and the beginning of this parcel. Um, so I'm not like... It, we don't have a situation where the front of the homes are facing, uh, you know, the front street or the major thoroughfare. There's a buffer. And so I actually would be in favor of completely flipping the buildings and having the garages in the back. And so by doing that, you have to introduce a new alley in the backside, right, in some way, um, which may not work, <laughs> I know, but uh, I think it's worth potentially exploring. And I think that there's actually some nice advantage to having the backside of the buildings open out onto the creek because, you know, that may be a place for, you know, folks to go walk. There's a creek trail, I think. I mean, there's some other things like that um, related to that. So that may be an idea. And I think you could do the exact same thing on the north side where you take the building and you flip it and create an alley on the backside for the garages and thus increase the distance between the backyards of the adjacent single family development um and so just have a you know an alley back there to pull into the parking <clears throat> and then you know so it's just an idea i don't know if it'll work because you'd have to play with obviously the whole entire north south orientation of what's going on here um and i know we're limited in terms of you know the alleys and accesses to parking garages and things like that but i think it might be something worth looking at um as an option um so because I, I think that might you know uh, create some opportunities for the buffer between the north and south um, that, that, uh, that that I think to to the adjacent parcels and whatnot. Um, you do have a there is a buffer on the, the east side uh, in terms of what looks like a bioswale or a stormwater treatment area. Yeah, so that's probably not so much of a concern to the adjacent uh, you know projects that we were talking about. There there is a little bit more going on there. There's uh, 23 and a half feet it looks like so less of an issue to adjacent property there um, okay um, you know architecturally I'm, I'm not for some reason I'm having trouble with the two 23 foot um, townhomes and then the 21 foots in the middle um, it, it just I don't know <laughs> I, I think there's there is a, there's nice variation in floor plan uh, in terms of, you know, you, since you have different, um, obviously you have different widths, you have some variation in floor plan, but effectively you have three floor plans, right? You have kind of, uh, you know, A on the outside, B in the middle, and or B, you know, kind of flanked, and C in the middle, kind of like three football linemen. Um, so you got a center, <laughs> two guards, or two tackles and two guards, whatever. Um, so I, I just I don't know if, if you know maybe it, it, you know it's maybe it's 23 21 or 23 22 21 or something like that where that it gives you actually a little bit more flexibility to create some variation in floor plan in terms of a width factor um, because it's just I, I, I don't know I'm just I'm struggling with it for some reason uh, I'm not exactly sure why maybe it's just equity among units is what I'm struggling with um, I, I think uh, this is just me being a nitpicky architect. Um, I think you could flip the primary bath and uh, uh, the master closet on the two end units. Um, I just I don't I'm never a fan of closets on the front elevation of a building. I think it's kind of like wasted space that could be utilized better, like eyes on the street sort of scenario. Um, so I wonder, you know, if you play around with that, um, uh, you know, the way that uh, the, the three interior floor plans are laid out is, is nice in terms of what's facing forward, right? You've got a bedroom facing forward or a bathroom or a staircase, which is kind of nice. Um, the reason I asked about the plate height is I, I think eight feet is a little, a little too short. Um, and I'd actually be a fan of a nine foot plate height 
which would match the adjacent single family development that you have. Um, I know the building would get a little bit bigger, but I still think you'd be under the uh, required 35 feet. I think it's 35 feet from the fire department. Um, so, and I, I think that might, I think increasing the plate height would give you a little bit more verticality of the buildings, particularly if you consider going to a seven flex. And so the verticality might help um, instead of making them kind of look squat, squat buildings. Um, and then um, related to what both Michael and uh, Adam said about, and, and also John, about four-sided architecture and, and the, the fact that the, the kind of the left and the right elevations need a little bit of love. I just had an idea, what if you pushed out the stair tower and the and the, the bathroom, you pushed them out so that way you had some variation in a, a, a you know, plane uh, on those sides of the building. I think that might help a little bit in terms of what, uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm only talking like a foot uh, to push it out. You know, that would give it some relief from that mass expansive stucco that's kind of happening and would give you the opportunity to introduce, uh, you know, a board and batten or a different siding or something like that that would uh, transition easily to uh, stucco on either side if that's something that you wanted to do. Um, with that being said, uh, I also think, you know, the front elevation is a good starting point, um, but the rear elevation does need a little bit of love as well. I mean, there's a lot of flatness to the rear elevation um, and a general lack of kind of uh, attention to what's happening on the front in terms of, you know, the gable ends and, and things like that. I think you could introduce a couple or just maybe one in the middle um, if that, you know, pushed instead of, or pulled instead of pushed, if you will, um, over that, that, that uh, middle garage that could be that could be an interesting element in terms of creating I mean you've got a very balanced building layout right now so uh, a central element on the, the drive aisle there might be interesting um, and definitely as you're driving by since the buildings are oriented kind of this way you would you would see that and it would create you know, some nice shadow lines and some good variation um, I think that's pretty much it for my thoughts. I mean, I, I agree on color, I agree on materiality. I think there's a possibility of introducing uh, another material. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I like the idea of, of the stucco coming up to where it comes up in terms of the, the bottom sill plate of the windows on the second floor. But I think it would be interesting to introduce kind of a, you know, maybe a, a belt of a trim. And then instead of stucco, you know, a, a different a material, siding material of some type, uh, on a couple of the, 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 you know, gable towers, if you will, that are going vertical. Um, that might be an interesting way to introduce uh, a third material while really not adding a, adding much cost, if any. Um, you know, stucco and fiber cement live in kind of the same economy of scale these days. Um, so that might be an interesting way to, to freshen up a lot of the stucco that's happening um, on most of the building uh, to introduce that. Um, and I think, um, you know, I would, I'm a little hungry for like three building ele elevations, given the number of the buildings on the parcel. Um, obviously the floor plans could all be the same, but you could, you know, have three different elevations, kind of building A, B, and C, and mix them up as you see fit, color and materiality, um, but obviously all in kind of the same vernacular kind of you know, modern farmhouse farmhouse style. I think that'd be really nice. Uh, that would give some some kind of place of ownership. Um, you know, somebody could say, "Oh yeah, well, I live in the second building in the the red house with the you know blue door or whatever." Um, you know, that's really nice. I think for people uh, that they can you know uh, give directions to their house uh, that are related to kind of how the architectural is comp architecture is composed as opposed to hey uh, you need to find my house amongst the other 50 that look identical to my house and uh, try to find the number good luck <laughs> you know uh, I think that's always a challenge um, and so to create a sense of place uh, I think is really important and you can do that very easily by introducing some color and some small variations in elevation without really adding cost um, so I think that's it for my comments. Um, 
Does anybody have any additional comments? Expand upon anything I've said, I've said or anything I, anybody else has said? I just wanted to, I just wanted to share that the, there were a handful of, of site plan ideas, and I think that one of the things that probably we're responding to is that the site plan is is a good starting point, but it's but it's very symmetrical and very clinical, and I don't think it's addressing the livability um, and some of the. Um, it's mostly the livability issues really with the site plan and i think that it just needs to good good starting point this is what you would draw up to say here we are we got this now what do we do to increase the amount of usable uh you know public space uh, minimize pavement uh, you know get front doors facing the right side of the project etc cetera, etc cetera. so good starting point just a little clinical little, little symmetrical and it would be fun to see what you come back with when you played around with it but those comments about the site plan, I think from three of us, it's a it's a bit of a word jumble, but I think there's a lot there to think through, so. Thanks, Michael. Anybody else? All right. Um, <clears throat> also, yeah, just wanted to um, yeah, talk about that that um, that livability, um, which it seems is, is one of the things that we've been kind of hitting on. Um, and that, that kind of, the, the, the you know, when it, you know, it's 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 instructive that, you know, almost all of our first questions were were about the the parking and about circulation, um, and that you know is interesting just from what rises to the surface and when we're critiquing design, but it also um, maybe gives clues about you know your starting point for the applicant team's starting point for design. Where did they? What did they? You know, focus on first today. Hey, okay, we would really want to have this type of development. Let's work from here. You know, I don't necessarily think that they wanted to do something that is car centric and with lots of paving, but there, there was there was a way of saying, hey, we want to have um, these these number of units. We want to provide um, good. We want to provide adequate parking. We want to provide good circulation and be able, for people to be able to get in and out. I think that that's a nice place to start. But I do think that you know another way you can frame that is those are some of the concerns but then look at the livability too that's the amenities that's the beauty that's the design the real like you know kind of intangible tangible thing that we um discuss as designers um is you take functionality and then you also make it um uh, beautiful and uh and um making it so it's it's really human um person focused um what are the, the you know um uh yeah, the, some of the comments um, about about that livability, about creating destination, about um, uh, uh, Michael's comments about the, that destination front door. Where's the front door aspect of it? Um, really, um, it, we're, we're trying to, to we want to see, uh, you know, th those little um, personalized touches. Um, one of the things that caught my mind. One, you know, I'm you know, a landscape architect fo fo focused person. Um, I, you know, m my first thing seeing with the, the landscape, conceptual landscape plan, um, seeing that uh, the, the um, gazebo that you have there, um, it's nice to have a gazebo, definitely um, need, need gazebos. Um, but the, what you, you've chosen to, to show, um, it might not be that, that, that thing in the end, that exact specific product number, but what you've proposed is, is going to kind of it's indicative of what we're we're hitting on it's utilitarian um it's off the shelf um it's not customized it's metal and concrete it's looks like a community park gazebo um create something that is 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 warm it's it's personal it's it's for families it's soft it's it's welcoming yeah. rather than say it's economic and efficient and we're good um we want to see you know, economic efficient and the design aspect of things. Um, all the other agencies and stakeholders that you're going to be presenting this to are going to be giving you the certain conditions that you have to hit. And like the fire, like fire says you need this, and that's that's a lot of land. That's what you do. For us, we hit those gray areas, and we want to see those gray areas be nice. Those those edge zones are beautiful. And so, keep going with that. Um, yeah, I don't. None of us are 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 shutting you down at all. Um, this is. Uh, you know, you, you, again, um, take what you got. This is a really good start, and just keep moving with it. Really look forward to seeing what you you guys come back with. I think it's gonna be fun. Thanks, Adam. Anybody else? All right. So I'm just gonna do a quick 
summary here, and then we're going to ask uh, the applicant if they've got any questions of us. Um, uh, typically, you know, sometimes we have some some crazy ideas that may not be feasible or, <laughs> or, or you know out of the question, things like that. Um, and so it's good to know, uh, you know, if there's a, a limitation or something like that. So, um, so just in summary, <clears throat> I think we've we've had a couple of comments about the site plan and potential uh, alternative ways to look at the site plan in terms of orientation. Uh, or, or location of access roads, location of and size of the park, location and size of uh, 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 the, the north and south in terms of how those units are accessed. Um, we'd like a little bit more love on both the left and right elevations uh, for sure, and also the south elevation a little bit. Uh, we still have some traffic and fire concerns, but obviously those won't come out until um, we have a full proposal. Uh, that's been looked at by uh, traffic engineering and fire, and, and, and we can kind of comment on that. Um, Adam really talked about, for, we all talked about four-sided architecture and, you know, customized detailing uh, potential to create a full paseo as you enter. Uh, more creative on the design variation uh, of each of the units, uh, of each of the buildings. Um, and uh, it's a very good start. Um, but there's a, you know, uh, because it's at kind of a conceptual stage, there is some information missing. And so, of course, if you come back, we'd like a little bit more detail, but there was some good detail there. Um, and that's it, I think, from a quick summary. So, uh, Savannah uh, and Jay, do you guys have any questions, comments for us? Does anything uh, seem crazy? So you guys, Let me see um, uh, what Jay says um, here over text. Um, I'm not sure if he wanted to just wait. Um, just give him a moment. And then I think another thing that's nice about our process, uh, just if, if you're curious, um, I think you're welcome to meet with any members of the design review board individually, um, should you choose. We just have to disclose that um, once you, you have uh, your official hearing, uh, you know your your uh, your, your actionable item. Uh, but you're feel, you feel free to, to to send an email to our city email address, and, and if you want to talk with us, step you know independently, that's totally okay. Um, and also, um, city staff is fantastic. Um, and they know how to get a hold of us and if you need oh, to do that. Um, um, but, but yeah, city staff is great as well uh, in terms of any questions you may have about the process or you know maybe things you've heard tonight. They're, they're great at taking notes and kind of understanding, I think, where we're coming from. So anyway, uh, questions? Oh, I was that? just gonna say, um, Jay uh, obviously can't talk because of his um, remote uh, out of country situation, but um, he said that uh, he would like it if um, I think Scott uh, Adams uh, from Vicinia Magoni just had a summary um, of, of some comments, and then we can just end with that, and um, that would be great. Okay, I think, I think we kind of summarized them, but Scott, do you have any additional thoughts, questions? Well, I need to make sure everyone can hear me. Is that is that something that's happening? That is, we can hear you. Oh, oh, okay. So um, I, I've listened to a lot of the comments, and I, and I think they are, you know, things that we can, you know, try to roll forward with. But I, I will tell you that the site plan, which I was in charge of, that's my role within Bassini and Lagoni Architecture and Land Planning, is I head up our firm's land planning operations. And this, the diagram, and I use that word very specifically, the diagram for this site concept I think is doing some pretty extraordinary things the way we've presented the site right now. And that is the function of front doors being loaded in with private yard spaces on the same side. That's what a road townhome effectively does. But if there's anything that celebrates the community connectivity in spades, it's that kind of concept. And we have it on A Street as we come in off of Burgess um, it is a way to come into the site. And if you look at almost all the edges over on the south end of the site at Colgan, we have an orientation there. What we're doing is we're trying to really truly celebrate front doors, um, 
interconnectivity of residents where they may be sitting in their private patio areas. And instead of it being a cloistered and sequestered backyard that nobody connects with anybody, this is the exact opposite by having the, the front doors where people can wave to their neighbors, can even stop and say hello. Um, that in conjunction with sidewalks leading all over the place as far as throughout the community. Uh, and then even we, we did stubs even to the offsite edges, knowing there are future connectivity things. This is not a subdivision that's got a community wall that makes it a walled fortress of suburbia from years ago. This is a very open, porous concept that I think really will encourage community connectivity. And so we were pretty focused on that with our concept. Um, I do want to at least make one more comment. Um, and I realize there's a lot of things that we heard and wrote down and can take you know, into consideration. But one thing as far as where the North South B Street is and trying to shift it more westerly, where maybe there's three plexes on one side on the west side and sevens on the other, it would create illegally long dead end uh, fire drive aisle lanes where the garages are. Uh, they can't be over 150 foot dead end without service to the far end. And so that's something that was part of our consideration was a technical nature to the site. So it, it is balanced, it's even. I, I, I understand fully trying to increase the community park area, but we know that the, the volume of it at, at two tenths of an acre for the number of units served will have a lot of nice uh, community epicenter features to it. So there's there's some really good comments that came out tonight, but um, and we'll we'll try to you know kind of roll some tissue over some of this and and kind of come back with some interesting ideas. But it is it is a carefully considered site plan as presented. Cool. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, yeah, it's good to good to know about that. You would be, you know, the fire lane stuff. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm an architect, and obviously, if I was working on this, I'd try it ten different ways, and then I'd be like, oh wait, what about this? Let me check the code. So I, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it's just an idea, um, you know, kind of off of what everybody else is saying or something that I saw or whatever. And we don't necessarily always look at the code compliant issues. I mean, sometimes we do, and we, we catch, uh, you know, things that aren't code compliant being presented. Sometimes. You know, we just present, uh, you know, an idea as, as an option and, 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 you know, hopefully you guys consider it. And, and if you don't, that's okay. And if you do, that's, that's great too. Um, I think, you know, what's great about our board is that I think we're very generally speaking pro project. We want to see projects come through the process. And, but, but at the end of the day, we'd like to see great projects come through the process. And so I think we're all really, um, uh, excited. Uh, about the possibility of helping uh, projects uh, reach that next level if possible. So thank you for your comments. We appreciate that. And with sure. that, um, I'm not hearing, seeing anything else. Uh, any, any final thoughts? Well, I, 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 I would, like, or I would like to I'd, I would like to follow up to say, um, as you can imagine, I've been made, I've made a number of presentations in my life about site plans and things like that. But just the tone and and kind of the demeanor of, of your group is so refreshing and positive to know that we can talk about design features and try to achieve something that is literally for the common good and for certainly the good of the of the town. Um, I'm encouraged by that right there. Thank you so much. Yeah, and well, I just wanted to, to comment and say that I uh, was very delighted to talk to all of you guys today as a city planner by my background. So it was great to be in a design concept review meeting. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Savannah. We're, we're, we're excited to see projects. I think, I, I think I, I know me personally, I, I love uh, driving around town and I'm like, Oh yeah, we approved that project six months ago <laughs> under construction or, you know, something gets finished and uh, that's a really great feeling, um, you know, when those things happen. So we just, I think, all of us would love to drive down Bellevue Avenue in a year and see a project under construction. Uh, that'd be fantastic. So with that, I think we'll Absolutely. close this item. If everybody's okay with that. Sounds good. And excellent. Thank you. So with that, we are on item nine, which is adjournment. So 603. 
Uh, everybody have a great weekend, a uh, great uh, Thanksgiving holiday, and we'll see you back uh, in December, it sounds like, for another uh, DRB meeting. So have a good one. Be We're healthy. officially adjourned. Have a healthy, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye Happy now. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs>